This is uh, lesson 13 for November 29, 2015. Unit 3, Spreading the Gospel. Speak Without Fear. Our devotional reading is taken from Matthew 28, 16 to 20. The background scripture, Acts 18, and the print message is from Acts 18, chapter 18, 1 through 11, 18 to 21. And the key, the key verse goes like this. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city, taken from Acts 9, 9 and 10, Acts 18, 9 and 10, from the King James Version. Lesson aims, as a result of experiencing this lesson, the student should be able to do these things. Number one. Review Paul's zeal for teaching the gospel message to the Gentiles after he was rejected by the Jews. Explore feelings that after making a transition from a vocation in which one's knowledge and skills are rejected to a situation in which one is enthusiastically embraced. Number three. Pray for the success of those whom God has placed in a new and challenging, challenging situation. Devotional reading, Matthew 28, 16-20. The background scripture, Acts 18. The print message, Acts 18, 1-11, 18-21. The key verse, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack or harm you, because I have many people in this city. Acts 18, 9, 9th, and 10th verse. This is from the NIV. Our verse 1, Acts 18, 1, goes like this. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Paul had gone to Athens. That's where he found that the people had started to worship the unknown God. They were mostly uh, educated people, the highest elite Verse 2, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius, the emperor, had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. Verse 3, and because he was of the same craft, that was uh, Tanner, he abode with them and wrought for, by their occupation, they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Saturday, every Sabbath, and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to, to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook off his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads, for I am clean from henceforth I will go to the Gentiles. Let me stop here for a moment. Isn't this the same marching orders that Paul had 
on his road on the road to Damascus in Syria yes it is verse 7 he departed thence and into a certain man's house named Justice one that worshiped God whose house had joined hard to the synagogue verse 8 and Crispus the chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his house and that reminds us of Cornelius who him and all his house were baptized after hearing the word and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized they became Christians this is the further extension of the baby church infant church if you like that was growing paragraph when we are faced with challenging situations in life the companionship of genuine friends is always a source of encouragement although Paul left loneliness due to the absence of Silas and Timothy God orchestrated his meeting of a husband and wife team who would provide Paul with companionship, work, and shelter for him, verses 1 to 3. This couple and other Jews had been forced to leave Rome during the reign of Claudius the emperor in 49 to 50 A.D. How Paul met Aquila and his wife Priscilla is not known. It may have been his need for supporting himself that led him to seek others with a similar trade. Sharing a mutual trade, in parenthesis, tent making and working with leather, and their home provided a base from which Paul could continue his ministry. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue every Sabbath to dialogue with the Jews trying to convince them that Christ was the Messiah whom they had rejected. Joined by Timothy and Silas, he turned his full attention to preaching exclusively to the Jews. We read in another verse that Peter were going to preach to the Jews and Paul's marching orders was to the Gentiles because God had told him there are some Gentiles over there that I want to save. This was probably made possible by a gift of financial support brought by his two companions. His efforts were again met by hostile rejection by the Jews. In response, he symbolically ended his ministry to them and turned his attention exclusively to the Gentiles. Paul found an ideal location from which to minister to the Gentiles that resulted in the conversion of the synagogue leader, his household, and many among the Corinthians. God can still lead others to us or us to them as a means of encouraging to continue ministering in challenging situations. What do you think? Describe a time when you were encouraged to continue ministering by the companionship of a fellow believer. Encouraged by God's presence, Acts 18, 9 through 11. This is verse 9. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak. And hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there for a year and a half, teaching the word of God to them. Paul's success among the Corinthians was the foundation of the church there. However, it is obvious from the night vision mentioned in verse 9 
that he had feared being driven out of the city that had previously happened in Macedonia. More than likely, the unbelieving Jews were envious and were stirring up opposition against him. Paul and the infant church there, despite the, spirit, the presence of new friends or wants and the support of the con Corinthian converts, Paul was again in need of encouragement. And as Paul struggled on whether to continue to min minister in Corinth, God provided encouragement of the highest kind, his divine presence, the Holy Spirit with Paul. And we read the verse where it says, he will be with us even unto the end of the age. Note that the promises God made his servant in this vision. First, Paul was assured that God was with him and therefore he had no need to fear to continue preaching the gospel. When God assures us that he is with us, there is no limit as to what he can accomplish for his glory. Secondly, he was assured of God's divine protection. What can human mankind do to us when God is protecting us? Finally, God encouraged Paul by revealing to him that many were and would be saved as a result of his ministry. Verse 10, these promises not only encouraged the apostle, but also motivated him to continue his ministry there for a period of 18 months. If we remain committed to God as we minister for him, we can also be assured of his perpetual presence and protection. This would be the Holy Spirit. What do you think? In what specific ways have you experienced the assurance of God's presence and protection as you, incur as you engaged in ministry for him. Submitting to God's will. Verse 18, Acts 18:18. 18, 18. And Paul, after he tarried there for a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head in Sincrea, for he had made a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. And when they desired him to tarry longer time with him, them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means, keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if it be God's will. The Mississippi Mass Choir recorded a song that reminded believers that the safest place to be is in the will of God. God has a perfect will for each of our lives, but it is our responsibility to both desire it and seek it. Being in, in his will is no guarantee that we will not have to face challenging situations, but it does provide assurance of his presence and protection. Although Paul was clearly in the will of God, his 18-month ministry was not without another wave of opposition. You would see that in verses 12 through 17. His enemies brought Paul to public court, but they were unsuccessful in getting a legal ruling to stop his ministry. The favorable ruling of the proconsul Galileo 
allowed Paul to continue ministering in Corinth for an unspecified time following his incident. Verse 18. After this period of time, he decided it was God's will for him to leave Corinth, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. He sailed to Syria after having his hair cut in Sincrea to keep a vow he had made to the Lord. Find that in 18c. Arriving in Ephesus, he went into the synagogue to reason with the Jews who when the Jews warned him wanted him to expend the time of his ministry there he declined but promised to return if God willed it so Paul realized that being in God's will was a major source of a strength and encouraged for living the Christian life Paul based his whole life on the will of God, and so shall we. We'll find something, <coughs> excuse me, we'll find the verse in 1 Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1. Question, how can we discern the will of God for our lives? Why is knowing his will important in ministry? A closing thought. Those who teach and preach the word of God must realize the certainty of opposition and discouragement. The Apostle Paul experienced these realities throughout his ministry. He was able to preserve because he kept his focus on God's will for his life. So should we. The encouragement of his many companions and most important, the insurance of God's divine presence and protection. We can boldly proclaim the truth of the gospel without fear if we emulate Paul's example. Your life? Select a spiritual leader or teacher in your congregation and offer encouragement to that person. Your encouragement can take the form of a special prayer, a note, or verbal communication. Genuine ministry can be lonely at times, but a true Barnabas to someone this week. Being a minister of the gospel in my training bringing up by this old preacher, a Reverend Gibson, he told me sometimes the life of a minister or pastor is going to be lonely. And sometimes you'll find yourself preaching to your own family because nobody else will listen. Have you ever been turned down when your own family shut the door in your face because they were not like you? Have you seen at times when there's only one person out of family of eight, nine, ten, there's only one person has accepted the whole Lord, the, the whole word of God in that household. In the New Testament, there's a verse that says, when you start to talk about Jesus and salvation, members of your own family will turn cold on you. Your world? Opposition to the message of the gospel still exists locally and globally today. The enemy has devised many subtle attempts to intimidate or destroy those who proclaim God's word. A key shield of protection is to seek and follow the will of God. Our closing prayer for this short talk is this. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of genuine friendship, the promise of your presence and protection, and for having designed your perfect will for our lives as we serve you daily. Thank you, Lord, 
for the time spent, opening our spiritual eyes to all that you would have us to know about our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ and what he did, the sacrificial atoning death on Calvary's cross over 2,000 years ago for such a wretch as we. Thank you, Father God, this day and until the next time. We say may the good Lord bless you and keep you until we talk again. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen, amen, amen.